Okay, freshmen, today we're going to talk a little bit about Germany. So here we're looking at Germany um, on the map of Europe. So to the south and to the west, here is the country of France, the same France that we had discussed yesterday. So here is the country of Germany, a little bit farther to the north. Um, the capital city of Germany is the city of Berlin. So talking a little bit here about the physical geography of Germany, as you can see, it is crisscrossed by a number of different rivers. Um, these rivers are used for a variety of transportation purposes. Um, a couple of the key rivers in particular are the Danube River here in southern Germany and the Elbe River in northern Germany. Those are two very key water routes um, for the transportation of goods and such across the country. As far as physical geography, northern Germany is very flat. It's a part of what you call the, the Euro northern European plain. So the northern part of the country is extremely flat. Um, the farther south you move in Germany, um, right in this region is where you have like the Alps Mountains, okay, or what we call the Bavarian Alps. So the southern part of Germany becomes more rugged, more hilly, um, kind of mountainous in a way. There's just another another map kind of showing some more, um, more political and physical features. Um, and you can see that there's a couple of forests here. So again, Bavarian Alps in the south, Black Forest here in the southwest, and the Bohemian Forest here. Um, in the southeast. Uh, the Black Forest is kind of a, um, a very scenic place. A lot of quote-unquote some of the fairy tales that you probably read as a kid took place in the, the Black Forest region of Germany. Um, again, very, you know, very lush with, with trees and vegetations and again um, wood products and that sort of thing. Um, Germany has become a very industrialized nation. They are probably the most industrialization, industrialized nation in Europe. Um, as far as manufacturing and energy production and um, that type of thing. And so one of the big struggles that Germany has is with air pollution. That's something that they're constantly dealing with. And so because of some of that air pollution, it's led to acid rain. And, and parts of the Black Forest in recent years have become damaged as a result of this acid rain, where, again, our atmosphere soaks up some of the, some of the um, emissions from the manufacturing, from the factories, and then again, those emissions eventually come back, return to the surface of the earth in the form of acid rain. And that's been damaging to the Black Forest. Again, talking about the Danube River. So here is the Danube, right? This kind of just shows the, uh, again, a political map of, of uh, Europe. But the Danube River is right here, kind of tracing it out with my mouse cursor here. Here is the Danube. So it starts in southern Germany, runs all the way across eastern Europe into the Black Sea here that borders the Ukraine and Russia. So um, it is the second longest river in Europe. The first longest river, if you're curious, for those of you that are into you know, kind of the trivial facts, is the Volga River. So here is the Volga in, in Russia here. I know the screen's a little blurry. But the Volga River is the longest river in Europe. There's a better picture of the Danube, kind of giving you an idea of its, of its path. So again, starting here in southern Germany, kind of up in the Bavarian Alps, running all the way across... Austria and Hungary and Romania into the Black Sea. Another physical region of Germany to be aware of is what's called the Ruhr. So the Ruhr is Western Germany. It's this area here. Cologne is a, um, a key city of the Ruhr. But the Ruhr is where there is a lot of natural resources, coal and iron ore. Um, it's also, again, very close to this Alsace-Lorraine region that we had talked about previously, where there's been some conflict in, in well, I don't want to say years past, but previously in European history, there's been some conflict over this region because of its richness in natural resources and such. So the Ruhr refers to this western region of Germany that is very rich in natural resources. Eastern Germany, again, getting closer to Russia and Poland and, and the Czech Republic and such. Again, still lots of industry there. Again, like we said, Germany is a very industrialized nation. So something to keep in mind there that even in East Germany, on the other side of the country, you still have a lot of the manufacturing and such. As far as some key people throughout German history, and again, we could go on and on about some of these people, but Martin Luther, um, one of the early important people of Germany, he was a, a monk. And he is going to lead the Protestant Reformation. So way back when, when there was some issues with the Catholic Church, Martin Luther, you know, took the step and pointed out what some of those wrongdoings were, eventually kind of creates his own church. And then eventually what happens is Christianity splits where you're going to have a Catholic church and what's called a Protestant church. And Martin Luther was 
um, the leader of this Reformation. Mr. Norman will talk more about him in world history next year. Um, another important guy was Otto von Bismarck. Um, so throughout Germany's history, Germany at one point in time was was very uh, divided. Um, and Otto von Bismarck, who became the, the chancellor of Germany, is going to unite all of the independent German states into one nation. Um, so instead of having ind like independent German states, he unites them into one. Um, and that was kind of his big thing um, and his claim to fame in German history. Fun fact, our state capital in North Dakota is also named after Otto von Bismarck. Um, another person who is well known historically, but not not for good reasons, is Adolf Hitler. Um, he was Austrian, however, he is going to become the leader of um, Germany under the as the head of the Nazi Party in the 1930s and 1940s. And again, his actions, some of the things that he does, and um, you know the the pure evil man that he was, where he wanted to conquer all of Europe for for Germany. But the things that he does eventually leads to World War II, which was the deadliest um, you know, human conflict in history that we know of, deadliest of our wars. Um, and again, it, it kind of put Germany into the hurt bag. Germany had been hurting economically before Hitler you know, took control. Hitler took control, kind of turned around the economy following World War I. And then, as you know, World War II, very catastrophic. And a lot of the actions that stem from, from Adolf Hitler and his Nazi party, his political party, are what led to World War II and, you know, a lot of the destruction of, you know, artifacts and landscapes and, again, lots of death and such, so not a good thing. But that all resulted from, from Hitler's rule. A lot of it did. So after World War II, Germany was actually split again. Um, so we had said that Otto von Bismarck had, Otto von Bismarck had united Germany. Following World War II, after the Germans had, you know, had surrendered and such and there was treaties, um, Germany gets split up into West and East Germany. So West Germany um, is going to be controlled by the United Kingdom, France, and the United States. All three of these nations democratic. East Germany is controlled by the Soviet Union, which now what we call the you know the democratic or the the People's Republic of Russia. Um, and what you see happen is you see a divide between between democracy and communism. And again, very different things. Communism, not, not a lot of freedoms and that sort of thing. Um, and then democracy, again, people get a lot of choices and such. And then also within East Germany, the capital city of Berlin was also divided into four zones with the Soviet Union controlling East Berlin and the United States, the United Kingdom, and France um, heading West Berlin. And that led to this uh, construction of the Berlin Wall that gets built by the East Germans to 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 divide the city to keep East Berlin residents inside East Berlin because again so many of the people who lived in East Berlin they were subject to communism um, and because they were subject to communism they really wanted to leave West Berlin was a very prosperous and exciting place East Berlin was very run down and communist and so for almost 30 years this Berlin Wall actually separated families who might have lived in Berlin. If you had a family that lived in West Berlin and a family that lived in East Berlin, they could not see each other. They were not allowed to cross back and forth until the wall came down in 1989. Again, we'd also said that Germany, it's uh, an industrial leader. Um, something else that they're well known for is automobile manufacturing. And one of the famous automobile producers that's uh, located in Germany or headquartered in Germany is BMW. Okay, they make very fancy cars. You should all make a goal of someday owning one. Um, but that is headed in Munich. Munich is one of the, one of the larger cities in Southern Germany. And again, Germany in general is a producer, leading producer of automobiles. Okay. Uh, Mercedes Benz, Dahmer, um, some of those other brands are headquartered in Germany. And again, that can contributes to some of its industrialism, um, industrialized might, I guess you could say. Um, as far as culturally speaking, one of the big holidays that's celebrated in Germany is Oktoberfest. Um, and that celebrates, um, I guess, traditional German culture and attracts people from around the world. Hopefully um, this fall they're still able to, to do some of those things. But that's kind of like one of the traditional German holidays. Now Germany as a, as a whole, again, it's kind of a diverse diverse place religiously, but Christianity is still um, like the, the main primary religion of the, of the country. So they still celebrate some of the, the Christian holidays such as, you know, Christmas, I guess you could say, and and that sort of thing. But 
Um, just some key points here about Germany. Please let me know if you have any questions.